Landboards presents LM2596A Power Supply Review. Here's the power supply. It's a tiny little unit. Let's take a look at the eBay listing. This particular seller sells in quantity of 10 for $10. So it's about a dollar for a power supply. Not bad. And it's definitely impressive when you get your mail and 10 power supplies are from individually wrapped bags. The board has two mounting holes, one in each diagonal corner, although there's not a lot of room around them. It's also marked on the bottom of the card of the direction of the input to the output. Here's the specs for the card from the eBay page. The page lists the load regulation as 0.5%. Let's do some measurements and see what the load actually does measure out at. The percentage load regulation is the change in the voltage over the range of loads expressed as a percent. Let's do some load regulation measurements. For this setup, we have a DC power supply in the upper center left. Next to that DC power supply is a voltmeter that's measuring the voltage at the load. To the right are the two d digital panel meters. The bottom one reads the current at the load and the upper one reads the voltage at the load. At the center and the bottom is the rotary pot which sets the load current. And in the lower left is the unit that's being tested. So here we vary the load from no load up to the 2 amp rated load of the part and take note of the voltage change as we vary the load. The voltage at the start was 5.04 volts. As the load current goes up slowly the voltage drops very slowly, not too much at all. Follow the voltage on the voltmeter rather than the panel meter. The panel meter is not nearly as accurate in this setup. As we approach the 2 amp load, let's see what the current value is at that point. At 2 amps, it looks like it's about 4.94 volts. If we do the math, that works out to a 2% load regulation, which is significantly worse than the half a percent rated. Let's take a look and see how much of that's the cable load drop, because note, we're measuring the voltage at the load. Here we've moved the cables that were at the DC load that go to the voltmeter. We've moved them over to the power supply that's being tested. Starting voltage looks like it's about 5.03 volts. We'll repeat the same test and increase the current from 0 amps up to 2 amps and take note of what the voltage drops to on the output at the full load of 2 amps. It looks like the final voltage here is about 4.98 volts, which is about half the drop we got previously. Looks like the end result is a 1% load regulation from 0 to 2 amps, which really isn't too bad. So the obvious question, at 2 amps, is the regulator chip or the inductor hot? For the touch test, we're running it at 5 volts output and 2 amps, and it's easily comfortable to leave our finger on here for a little while. Uh, for performance, the Mini 360 and the LM2596 power supply are very comparable. Check out our video on the Mini 360, but it's clearly much smaller than this power supply. Here are the two sets of specs side by side. The LM2596 part has a wider input voltage range uh, going as high as 40 volts. The output voltage range is, uh, goes higher as well. Although the 1.0 to 17 volts range of the Mini 360 is more than sufficient. They both run about 2 amps. They both claim the same amount of output ripple and load regulation. Although our test showed the Mini 360 did a little better on load regulation. Um, very comparable parts. If you don't have a lot of board space though, the Min 360, Mini 360 is a very nice card for that. If you want more information, you can see our wiki pages for these products and we have YouTube videos on them as well. We have a store in Tindy where we sell all of our cards. Thanks for watching our video and if you enjoyed it, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.